this here is disconnected from our tool, but still it's about our tool because it's where I put in some thoughts. And in the past months, we got more and more questions about, do you do data mesh as well? Yeah, in the beginning, it's okay. You heard term the first time, so you start reading, you start looking at it. And as we got more and more questions in, in the past months and past weeks, I thought to formulate my thoughts on this. These are my personal thoughts. So if you have different experience, if you think I've got something wrong, please let me know because that's based on reading one book, comparing it to my experience. And that's what I'm presenting today. And I try to give you some answer. So for the people not knowing me, my name is Peter Bellas. I'm working in data warehousing since the year 2000. And I've seen already some changes. I've worked for bigger companies in the finance industry, in telecommunications, and there were always issues with the data warehousing team being too slow, maybe delivering the wrong stuff. And people try to find solutions to that. So we change technologies, we changed approaches, we became agile. So this is evolving. And one of the changes were that we changed the way how we model and approach the physical implementation of data models when we started to work with Data Vault. I came to Data Vault modeling about 2012 and with Data Vault modeling to data warehouse automation. And I'm still working for the Data Vault Builder Company, so that's my background. So please take into consideration that my point of view is biased with what I'm doing. So what kind of problems we had in the past if data warehouse projects failed? There was a perception of high cost. Still, the business user maybe didn't care too much about it. This was the management, but the business users cared about low change speeds. So they asked about something, they got it months later, and in the meantime, they've created their own Excel solution so that people even came up with the claim that Excel is the most used BI tool worldwide. And they had a feeling that they're dependent on the central data team and the data team is never delivering. The data team on the other side was really struggling with getting requests from 10 different departments, prioritizing them and trying to work on something, then dropping everything because something else was very important and changing priorities and becoming very inefficient. So with that came up the question, is centralization the right way? So I've seen several waves of centralization and decentralization, and it was going forward and backwards. And, and maybe this is not a bad thing that you try to find equilibrium because I don't think there is like absolute answer for every company in every size, what should be done. And there are two kinds of centralizations versus decentralizations. Mainly one about topics like subject areas or now as we call it data domains. And as well between countries, we have this here in Switzerland quite often that the headquarters in Switzerland, but we have a lot of subsidiaries uh, outside of Switzerland in the EU, in the US, in Asia. And you have different teams because you have different source systems, but still you need to bring it to a harmonized output that you can bring all the data worldwide together. So in this context, I have seen some arguments now in the data mesh discussion about saying if you decentralize your data management approach, you can scale it because you have several teams that can work on less topics. You can prioritize it with your domain users so you don't have 10 different users, and that's a great thing because if you ever worked in data management team of a big phone company, you know how your day is that sometimes three or four people are standing at your desk and trying to get, get their stuff prioritized. And you have business know-how. You're very near to the consumers. On the other hand, if you decentralize things, you're missing central governance. You need local resources there where you implement the stuff. And sometimes for maintenance, this can be a nightmare if the different decentral units choose a completely different approach to do stuff. So if you think about decentralizing, the data mesh book is a very good description on best practices or good ideas and visions sometimes. 
what you can do to implement it. And honestly, I was really feeling some pain reading the book and not because what is written in there, but of the situations described in there that I felt uh, experienced myself. And I was thinking, OK, I exactly know what she is describing, what she is proposing makes sense, and it's a good approach. So am I now convinced to switch from data vault to data mesh? Mm. Let's see how it is ends up. So what does for me a key takeaway was from this book? And there is a lot described. There are several hundred pages. I will not do a complete overview about what is there, but some some important points that connected with me. One is that you create decentralized units. They deliver data products. The data product is self-contained unit that makes sense, that can be used, that's generating business value. So it's like an interface to your integrated data, clean data. It has data, metadata, lineage, confidence information, a lot of other stuff, and it's implemented by a local team. So it is disconnected from a centralized deployment schedule or anything. You don't have a central bottleneck. The local teams in a data domain can produce it on their own. So what is about Data Vault? Is now data mesh replacing data vault? Is data vault modeling obsolete? Is everything we did bad? Um, it depends. No, the answer is no. It, not everything that we did it was bad. Data vault is a completely different layer for me. Data vault for me is a method of data modeling and of physical implementation that supports agility, that is in a state that it can be maintained very easily. And they can be expanded very easily. And I believe we need, both, we need both. The one thing is about how do you organize your development. The other thing is if you organize your development is if either if it's centralized, which can be still valid for smaller companies, or if it's decentralized, if you are in a bigger or international corporation, how do I implement this local data product? And in the book is described as well that the local teams, the data domain teams should decide on how to do that. And I still believe that the data vault approach is the right thing to do within the data domain. So why? Because we still have the function of a data warehouse that we somehow need to do. And it doesn't matter how we do it. If we do them in Python scripts, if we do them in some automation tools, organizing the T part or what we ever heard, this morning, you need to somewhere do these things of data integration from different sources. You need to harmonize it, you need to cleanse it. So these things don't go away, even if you decentralize. Yes, in the book, she describes this nice vision that cleansing should be done by the source system. And I perfectly support this and I would sign every document forcing this on the source, but you know how it is in real life, it doesn't happen. So this kind of functions you need to do. And how do you do that? By approaches that work on a standardized way. So I still believe that there is value to model your data within the data domains. I agree there shouldn't be like a central model that we used up like months to model it. And when it was finished, it was for the trash can because it was not current anymore. But still, we need to give meaning to things. We want to express relation between things and we know we need to document this kind of things because it's good that some business users know it. It might be good that some developers in the data domain know it, but if you get new employees, they shouldn't need to discover this again and again. The problem with classical data modeling was it was very abstract. It was manually implemented, so it took as well ages after we decided on what the data model is. And the data models were not updated if the implementation differ, uh, diverged from what we model. So I think, yes, there were problems with modeling, but because of that, you shouldn't throw away all the modeling, but you should do it better. And what is the re result of this discussion? For me, it is if we want to use continue data modeling within the data domain, we need to convert models into working code automatically. The second thing is we need to automate not only the model to code conversion, we need to automate the full development cycle. It means of setting up new environments. 
deploying models, testing them, validating them, deploying them, running them. And if we want to do automation, we should choose implementation on the physical layer that is very optimal for automation. And this is where I believe that Data Vault is really fulfilling this kind of requirements. It's designed for agility. It has a loose coupling. It's designed for automation because it's very deterministic how you translate your data model, your logical data model into your code. And because it's hyper-normalized, you can produce nearly all the outputs that you want by denormalization, which is a pretty simple step. Because as we've heard by Michael's presentation, if you capture the cardinalities, you can nearly automate everything in there. So instead of answering the question, is it data vault versus data mesh? It should be data vault plus data mesh. But I believe, and that's now my bias, it should be data vault with automation and data mesh. And again, this is for bigger corporations, international corporations. I still believe that if you are in a mid-sized company, that centralizing with automation could be the right solution for you. So how do you use Data Vault in the different domains? Now let me just check the time. If you're still on track, it should be okay. So Data Vault in the domains means that we're automating and standardizing. And by having an automated solution that is used by all the domain teams, we can implement centralized governments that's described in the data mesh book that you have so-called sidecars that you try to inject your governance into your local implementations and if they're all different you need to build all the sidecars again and again so it can be good to have a standardized approach to create a local implementations if you have standardization it means that the metadata is standardized and you can bring all the different local implementations through the data products together so this is reducing risk and cost within your data domains. So should every domain be a data vault or use data vault? I don't believe so. If you have some machine data and your main task is to deliver real time machine data from one source that is very clean because it's just sensors, events, you maybe don't need a data vault. But I still, I believe that many domains will have still the challenges that we have with data integration, cleansing, and all this, what we did in the past. So not maybe every domain should use it, but probably many of them. And how can we connect the data products if they're created in independent data vaults in created in every domain? And here we have a model where we say, okay, we have besides the domain models, a central model that just contain entities that they exist, defining their key names, and we can distribute them, this central model through CICD into the different domains, and the domains do the implementation part. So the central team is not blocking anybody, they just define that a domain, uh, that an entity exists, distributing it, and the local teams can use it. And if they figure out that the domain that they are using, uh, entity that they are using is very important for the central team, they case and send it back to the central model and it gets redistributed to all the others. And this central definition of entities defines as well that the key names are the same in all the domains. So if you have a transaction and there is a customer key in there, by the name definition you will know if you get another data product with the customer that you can link the two together and the central model will as, as well as to explain you how to do that. So you get as well some metadata about that, how these things relate. And then on the experience plane, you can bring the stuff together. So that was a very short presentation about my thoughts about Data Vault and Data Mesh. And now I would be happy if you have any input, if you believe that this fits as well your expectation or if I have a completely wrong idea about what data mesh is.